What's going on guys, this is Bruce Matz and your host of the show, Metro Scout Fantasy Football, the show that talks about all things fantasy, redraft, dynasty, DFS, Devi, everything in between, something you're into, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. There's not much going on in off season. it's a slow news cycle. Today we got a little bit of news from the Jets camp and Keelan Cole has been starting or been playing above Denzel Mims. Not really a big deal, really. It's just mid-June. It's June 12th. They're just working things along, trying to see how they want to structure their team going into the season. Created like a little bit of uproar on social media. I've seen some people calling Denzel Mims fifth in line for targets. And this is just a reminder that just some teams are just going to mishmash their players in camp just to see what they like best. The Jets did sign Keelan Cole to a one-year, $5.5 million contract, so it's a one-year deal. He does fit well with the offensive scheme according to what the beat writers are saying. They want crisp route runners who get open quick. Denzel Mims is more of a linear guy, gets downfield. However, Denzel Mims has a completely different skill set and a skill set that sets him apart from a lot of wide receivers in the NFL. He's 6'3", 207 pounds, and ran a 4'3", 40-yard dash. And he's an air yards monster. His opportunity share last year was through the roof. He had a 14.5 average depth of target and a 29% share of the air yards when he was on the field last year. An injury slowed him down. He didn't have a camp or whatever and still was a key component to the offense last year i look for him to have a role i look for him to be doing things it may not start out week one week two as him as the number two guy it may be the number three guy and even with him being the number three guy that doesn't mean he can't be the number one guy on air yards on the team and we want to chase opportunity and how this player gets opportunity him getting those deep targets the splash plays from a quarterback zach wilson who was one of the tops in all of college football and throwing the deep ball is a good match. And you got a wide receiver here that was drafted in the second round, a team that spent second round draft capital on him that's proven that he's got some talent, some prospectus to him that he can be a producer at the NFL level, at least be able to carve out a role. And his innate ability allows him to have a chance to be on the field. Of course, the team drafted Elijah Moore this year. He's going to be a threat. He's going to be in the slot, working those short to intermediate routes, and we should see him get some run. Of course, Corey Davis is going to get his. Keelan Cole, we saw him in Jacksonville. We saw how that played out. He is a good wide receiver. He's very functional. He's all right. He's not going to lift the top off of defense like Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims has more upside. If he shows that in camp... They're not going to just keep them below Cole. Mims could really end up being the lead horse out of all these guys by the end of the year. But the thing about these wide receivers, it's all according to price. Right now, an underdog fantasy, all these guys are so cheap that you can draft Zach Wilson, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims, Keelan Cole. You can draft all these guys all together and have a team of Jets. Think about this. You can just draft all these guys. These guys are a mishmash of cheap values. Denzel Mims is going to be even cheaper now. So what's the point of get, being worried about this? Because if he's a super cheap wide receiver and, and the asking price is getting cheaper and cheaper, then the buying opportunity is not that bad. If he busts, he busts. The thing about this offense is we know that they are not the smoke show at the bar. We're not going after the Jets first thing. For us to want to feel comfortable with the Jets, we're going to have to pound some beers first. That's that's just the nature of the story. They're, they're the Jets first off. They're transitioning. They could end up better down the line, but we don't know. First off, it's mid-June right now, so anything can happen. I like the p way they're building their offense with Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims to stretch the field, and then the addition of Keelan Cole for that veteran presence. There's just a lot going on good here to help Zach Wilson transition to the NFL level. This team's still figuring things out, figuring where 
they want to put their pieces. I would not look at these camp reports here at mid-June and think that they're etched in stone. And things aren't ever etched in stone even in week one. It could be week five, six, seven, eight. And next thing you know, this wide receiver depth chart's flipped on its head. And Elijah Moore and Denzel Mims could be the main guy. Or Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. Or Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. It, that we don't know. There's a lot of talent here, actually. There's a lot of talent this team has to sift through. There's a lot of talent Zach Wilson has to sift through. And also, when Zach Wilson drops back the pass and how he goes through progressions and what he likes also determines where the targets go. So Denzel Mims is stretching the field, and he is getting open, and he's getting targeted deep. Then that could equate to fantasy points, and that workload that he's getting will allow us to want to chase him in fantasy either way. I can see this working good for Elijah Moore. I want to buy him as well. I want to buy some Corey Davis shares as too. All these wide receivers, they got an opportunity to hit this year. This is a very ambiguous situation. No one really knows what's going on. The biggest guess you can take from this is Corey Davis is probably going to be the target leader of this team. Elijah Moore's got a lot of upside. He's the fresh rookie. Denzel Mims, deep ball specialist, probably going to get air yards, deep targets, and it'll probably be up and down throughout the year. Keelan Cole's a veteran. He's probably not going to get enough volume to be fantasy relevant, even though people are trying to talk him up on fantasy football Twitter, but he's, he's going to probably not going to be worth the while. So that's probably how things are going to play out. And the younger guys are probably going to progress throughout the year. Elijah Moore's probably going to do his best work in the last eight to six weeks of the season. And he's going to show a lot of promise. Same thing probably with Denzel Mims if he gets a lot of opportunity with Zach Wilson and he connects with him. This team's got a lot of promise. It's very ambiguous. So it's hard to key in on any of these situations on the team. My best advice for anybody who are looking at these Jets players, just buy them. They're cheap. Load them up on your roster. See what happens. There's no loss if you lose out because they're that cheap. I want to thank you for watching the show. It means a lot to me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Ring the bell, tell your homies, and I'll catch you next time.